covering all your local high school football games with highlights and scores. Now, Football Friday, brought to you by Alabama Credit Union. And good evening, everybody, and welcome in to week number one of WVUA 23's Football Friday, presented by Alabama Credit Union. Visit alabamacu.com to learn more. Alabama Credit Union, loans for real life. I'm Gary Harris. You know, last week was week zero. We had an expanded sports show, but we crank it up tonight with week one. And we've got highlights from 14 high school football games for you this evening, including highlights from one game that wasn't even played, plus our complete DCH Football Friday high school scoreboard. And we begin with our game of the week. Now, the Game of the Week, sponsored by Tuscaloosa Tourism and Sports. Tuscaloosa's Tourism and Sports Game of the Week, TCHS hosting Hillcrest on their brand new $1 million turf field. County High leading 3 0, but here comes Ethan Crawford. Ethan Crawford is a dangerous man. The junior quarterback from Hillcrest is one of the best players in the country. He shows you right there why. He takes it to the house. This place was cranking tonight up in Northport. Patriots with the ball again. This time Crawford with his arm throws it up to Derek Hall, who makes the tough catch and then defeats the tackler and gets it into the end zone. 14 3 Patriots. They've been dominating this series lately. It continued tonight. Jay Brown, and no need to make reservations. He's just leaving like the line of scrimmage for the end zone. Touchdown, Patriots, and they go on to roll tonight as we check out the final. 35 to 10, Hillcrest big tonight over TCHS. The 6A Patriots lost that heartbreaker to Homewood on a last second field goal a week ago. They bounce back tonight and knock off the Wildcats up at County High, 35 to 10. Well, Falcon Field was empty tonight because earlier today, the Tuscaloosa City Schools system made aware of a video in which a student from Northridge High School made some disparaging comments about Central High School and its community. The viral nature of the video raised tensions in the community. Because of this, school leaders of both schools in conjunction with system leaders made the decision to postpone the game until tomorrow morning at 10 a.m at Falcon Field. Now we will be there for the game in the morning and we will have coverage for you tomorrow night on the news at 10. But again, that game postponed tonight will be played tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. at Falcon Field. All right, let's get back to action. The Paul Bryant Stampede tonight at home against the Poets from Sydney Lanier in Montgomery. Here comes the Stampede, but here come the Poets. Braylon Jones throws it deep. And Jeterius Robinson is there for the touchdown. Paul Bryant catches Sidney Lanier here off guard, and they don't protect the punter, and it gets blocked. Tadarius Pickens gets the block. That gives the stampede field position. Could not cash it in, but in the second quarter, Cameron Ellis shows his arm as he connects with Javion Watkins. Into the end zone. A good game for a while tonight out in Cottondale, but it was Sidney Lanier pulling away to get the victory tonight, 33 to 13 over the Paul Bryant Stampede. American Christian hosting Greensboro tonight. Beautiful evening for football at all of these stadiums tonight. ACA gets it started, driving, but Jakari Moore scoops up the fumble. That's right, the Pats give it up, going into the end zone, and Jakari Moore is gone. He does have reservations for six. 100 yards, he takes it to the house, but ACA bounces back in the second quarter. Sawyer Dearman rolling, buying time, and finds Chance Henderson in the end zone for the scoring strike, seven to six the score. We start the second half. Taquan Lewis hooking up with Tidarian Lewis. Taquan and Tidarian, the Lewises, 80 yards. That ties the game at 14. This was a dandy ball game. Just ended a short time ago as we check out the final. ACA pulls it out tonight over Greensboro with the Raiders. They came to play. The Patriots, though, get the W. That's the bottom line, 34-20, the final. All right, four games down, but we've got 10 more to go. When we return to Football Friday, presented by Alabama Credit Union, Hale County played host to Sipsy Valley. But first, Linden traveled north to reform to play the Pickens County Tornadoes in a rematch of last season's Class 1A state championship game won by the Patriots 
The tornadoes were looking for payback. That's next when we return to Football Friday. And we're back here on Football Friday. I'm Gary Harris. Our cheerleaders are brought to us all season long by Pool and Patio Center. All right, uh, last year it was Linden beating Pickens County for the Class 1A state championship last December right here at Bryant Denny Stadium, 32 to 8. They win the 1A class title. Tonight, the rematch in reform. The Tornado's looking for payback. Let's take you up the Highway 82 West to Pickens County where they love their football. Of course, Linden, they love it down there as well. Early in the first quarter, Tornadoes quarterback Javion Bell tosses it to Jacoris Barnes, who hauls it in on his fingertips for six. What a grab. The helmet comes off, but the football stays in his hands later in the quarter. Pickens County running back Adante Warner, Warner is brought down in the end zone. That's a safety. Linden gets the deuce there. It's six to two. Later, the Patriots... Took an eight to six lead, but here come the tornadoes. Bell, Kamari and Plot. Look at the Jets. He turns it on. 14 to eight. Pickens County now with the lead. This was a game that you would expect from two great Class 1A teams. Later in the second quarter, Bell found Plot again for another touchdown. Watch Plot here. I like Jalen Waddle. He stuck that foot in the ground, cut it back. And they would not catch him. 20 to 8, and Pickens County gets revenge. How sweet it is as they win it tonight at home over Linden, 26 to 16, the final. Sipsy Valley, the Bears traveling down Highway 69 South to Moundville to take on Hell County tonight. The fans were pumped up in Moundville. Hell County, though, coming to play on the defensive end. Sipsy Valley throws the pick. And it goes back for six. Hell County has the lead. But here comes Sipsy Valley. Jameen Anderson spins, breaks several tackles. He's in the end zone. What a touchdown run. The Bears back in front. Later, the Bears. Dalton Bailey has open field right into your living room. What a run, touchdown, Sipsy Valley tonight. Gets a huge win on the road as we check out the final in Moundville over Hell County. The Bears get it done. What a win for Sipsy tonight, 30 to 24. The Gordo Green Wave, the Aliceville Yellow Jackets. Pickens County rivalry tonight down in Aliceville. Gordo decked out in those Green Bay Packer looking uniforms. Aliceville in the home blue and the gold. Gordo's Rayshon Williams. 15-yard pickup. Then Williams again with the first down. But Aliceville was stingy tonight. Watch them bow up right here. He tried to go to the well one too many times. Aliceville with the defense, so the Green Wave turns to their great quarterback, Tanner Bailey. The Oregon commit finds Cole Somerville in the end zone. Touchdown, Gordo. They led 7 to nothing as we check out the final. Gordo pulls it out. 71 points in this one with the Green Wave. Big road win tonight. 40 to 31 was the final. Up in Walker County, Jasper hosting Coleman. This series tied at 35 wins, two ties. That's as even as you can get. Coleman would strike first. This is an intense rivalry. Our Keith Dobbins on hand. Here comes Coleman. Jake Doolin hauls it in from Ryan Skinner. The drive, though, would stall. The Bearcats, though, would kick a field goal. Jasper starts its comeback in the second quarter. Webb, Spencer Rosenfield takes it around the end for a big game. Rosenfield then keeps. And that is a touchdown right up the gut. 7-3, Jasper at the half. Starting the second half, Skinner is going to bring it into your living room for Coleman. Great video by Keith Dobbins. And then he'll hit Caleb Heatherly for a touchdown. But Jasper would score with 138 to go to win the game, 20 to 16. And now Jasper has a one-game edge in that great 
series all time. Eight man football tonight, Alabama Christian Association. Tuscaloosa Christian was scheduled. Uh, we had it down playing Heritage, but it was Trinity Christian that they played. We still got the highlights. Trinity Christian tried to get something going, but it was all Tuscaloosa Christian tonight. Freshman safety, safety Seth Hester gets the pick right there. Trinity, though, gets it back. And here we've got Jones right past our camera. <laughs> That is what you call a long touchdown, but Tuscaloosa Christian responded. Jay Dockery to Sean McMullen out in the flat, and McMullen has the touchdown. Tuscaloosa Christian wins it big. You saw Trinity's only touchdown. 50 to six, the final. The Warriors get the victory tonight. Well, still to come tonight, our complete DCH football Friday scoreboard, but first, the two-time defending Class 7A state champion Thompson Warriors welcomed the Sparkman Senators from Huntsville to Alabaster this evening. They were rude hosts. They're a powerhouse. Highlights are on the way when Football Friday, brought to you by Alabama Credit Union, returns right here on WVUA 23. Hi, we're the Garden News Jaguars, and you're watching Football Friday on WVUA 23. Welcome back to Football Friday. I'm Gary Harris. All the cheerleaders, the Northridge cheerleaders, you saw them there, do a great job. They're presented each week by Pool and Patio Center. All right, let's keep it rolling here on Football Friday. The two-time defending Class 7A state champion, Thompson Warriors, hosting Sparkman tonight. The Senator's coming down from Huntsville. And Thompson is, uh, I'm telling you now, <laughs> this is some kind of high school football team. They waste no time. Connor Harrell throws it up right in the bucket for Ryan Peppins. 37-yard touchdown pass. Thompson on top, 7 to nothing. Watch this defense. Oh, my gosh. Nate Riddle just hammers the quarterback. They're nasty. Still in the first quarter. I mean that as a compliment. Defense is supposed to be nasty. Harrell rolls, buys time, and then fires a touchdown to Jalen Ward. That made it 14 to nothing. Warriors. Still in the second, 28 to nothing. Thompson and Connor Harrell will connect again. Again, it's Peppins. And this is getting to the point where you can kind of see what's coming here. Another huge victory. As we go to the scoreboard for the second straight week, Thompson hammers their opponent and shuts them out. Oxford last week, Sparkman this week, 55 to nothing. This team has Division I college prospects and commits everywhere under Mark Freeman. And you see the evidence of that with another blowout win. All right, Spain Park at home tonight against Briarwood. Spain Park up by one early. Look at that, Scott. What a beautiful night. Trying to extend its lead, but there's a mistake. Ball is thrown up into the end zone, and it is picked off by the Lions, and that would be a huge momentum shift. Third and long, the Lions trying to score before the half. Christopher Vizina in trouble, but gets it out to Luke Rebels who moves the chains, and now just 18 seconds to go until half. Vizina looking and negotiates his way into the end zone, and that led to a big second half for Briarwood. They go on to win it tonight over Spain Park, 42-8, to the final score. All right, Pinson Valley coming off a loss to Hewitt Trustful last week. The defending class 6A state champions at home against Shades Valley. A battle of the valleys. Here comes Pinson. Jalen Taylor cuts to the outside. Just call him the bus. He looks like Jerome Bettis, doesn't he? <laughs> he rambles in to put the innings up 7 to nothing. And when you got Taylor and he can't be stopped, why wouldn't you just keep handing it to him? Another first down there. And then Michael Sharp finishes it off, putting Pinson Valley up 14 to nothing. In the second quarter, the Indians D gets into the act. Jacoby Jackson gets the sack. And Pinson Valley's ground attack too much. They couldn't be stopped. Coach Sham Shade took it to the ground. Here's Sharp, his second touchdown. Pinson Valley cruises tonight as we check out the final over Shades Valley, 49 to nothing. Big win. They bounce back to do the Indians. Oak Mountain at Pelham. This one at Ned Bearden Stadium over in Pelham, Alabama. Scoreless at the half, but then the Oak Mountain Eagles turn it on. Evan Smith, who is a great player, from five yards out, makes it 14 to nothing, Oak Mountain Eagles. Then on the next possession, third and long, and Smith just keeps it because he's that good. He's really good at football. 
I mean, when you can't tackle a guy, and I mean, they literally can't tackle him, that gets him right back into the red zone, and then he hands it off to Trey Vassell, who gets it into the end zone, and that's the nail in the coffin. Oak Mountain tonight wins it in shutout fashion over the Pelham Panthers. 21 to nothing is the final score. On Thursday night, we had the Fairfield Tigers hosting the Center Point Eagles. And the visitors from Center Point were fast out of the gate. Really fast. Troy Bruce with the nice cut. And he's in for six. But Fairfield's got a playmaker too. Auburn commit Jacoby Albert. Big night for him. The touchdown catch and run for a touchdown. And then later, Eric Hanley finds Albert again. And this is why he's going to be playing in the SEC for the Auburn Tigers. That kind of talent. He tight ropes it down the sideline. Four touchdowns for Albert. Fairfield wins it 32 to 14 on Thursday night. Well, when we come back, our Football Friday Band of the Week. And still wondering how your favorite team did this evening? Well, wonder no more. Our complete DCH Football Friday scoreboard is on the way. So stay tuned for more Football Friday right here on WVUA 23, presented by Alabama Credit Union. school bands and that is the Northside High School Band cranking out some queen. Welcome back to Football Friday Northside our high school band of the week. Football Friday presented by Alabama Credit Union. It's now, ta now time to check in on all of our scores from across West Alabama so let's turn our attention to the DCH scoreboard. Let's run them down for you. How about that? Bibb County at home tonight in Centerville. They win it over Fayette County 31 to 12. Also Gulf Shores at home. Brookwood made a trip down to the Gulf Coast and comes up uh, short 31 to nothing as Gulf Shores beats the Brookwood Panthers. Other finals tonight, Dora over Holt. Holt, though, got 24 points on the board, and that's a start. They lose it, though, 56-24. Winfield at home knocks off Northside. Two good football teams there, but Winfield too much for the Rams tonight. Northside falls on the road, 32-14 the final. Holtville goes into West Blockton, and West Blockton takes care of business at home tonight. West Blockton wins it 43 to 25. We had South Lamar and Barry down for tonight. Found out it's actually next week, September the 3rd. So we'll get that South Lamar Barry game for you next week. Uh, having some issues with some scheduling this year. It's been a little tougher. Lamar County wins at Phil Campbell. Shuts out Phil Campbell. Seven to nothing. Old fashioned slobber knocker there. McAdory, a wild went over to Mopolis tonight at home. McAdory wins it over the Tigers 33 28. The Yellow Jackets take that one. Other finals tonight Hoover over Alpharetta, Georgia. The Bucks win over teams from the state of Georgia in back-to-back -back weeks to start the season, 35-7 the final. It was Homewood tonight at home, holding on against Vestavia, 9-7 the final in that one. Other scores tonight, Clay Chockful in a shootout over Hueytown, and I do mean a shootout, 97 points, 57-40 the final. Gardendale beats Bessemer City tonight. Gardendale wins it on the road over the Tigers, 39 to nothing the final there. It was Cordova at home over Carbon Hill, 47-8. And Curry and Oakman, boy, Curry's had a tough time. They haven't won a game in a couple of years, and they go down big tonight at home to Oakman, 66 to 18 the final. It was Hubbardville winning at Waterloo. They certainly were the Waterloo for Waterloo, 49 to nothing. Hubbardville takes it, and Hamilton at home wins it over Sullivan in a rivalry game, 37 to 22. And it was Pickens Academy winning at Coosa Valley Academy, 35 to 14 the final in that game. Big win for the Pirates. Haleyville and St. John Paul II Catholic. Haleyville wins it 29-22 and South Choctaw Academy over Southern Academy 43-21 is the final in that one. And a couple more finals to pass along that we didn't have on our scoreboard. Hackleburg beat Brilliant 26-6 and J.B. Pennington over Oak Grove. Pennington wins it 21 to 20. Okay, our high school coverage for week one is in the books, but we aren't done. When we return, Nick Saban talks about the Crimson Tide players dealing with expectations placed on them by the media. That's straight ahead on WVUA 23's Football Friday.
Let's talk some college football. Alabama always has high expectations. It comes with the territory. The Tide ranked number one in the preseason. Predicted to win the SEC and make the college football playoff again. Nick Saban now on the players dealing with expectations placed on them by people like me in the media. The biggest thing that we have to deal with with our guys is um, you have anxiety that these players have. First of all, they read what you guys write. Uh, they read that they're supposed to be in the playoffs. They read that they're number one. They read all these things that, you know, I've referred to this as rat poison before. All right, so that creates a lot of anxiety, and everybody thinks they have to elevate their game. So you got that going on with the older guys, all right, which I'm trying to convince them, hey, man, we just got to play our game. Everybody's got to play your game. Don't put pressure on yourself uh, and think you got to be something that you're not, and we got to play together as a team. Next Saturday, Alabama kicks it off with the Miami Hurricanes over in Atlanta. All right, that is going to do it. Thanks to our sponsors, Alabama Credit Union, DCH, Tuscaloosa Tourism and Sports, and Pool and Patio Center. And thanks to all the good people that make this show possible. You're going to see some of their names as we leave you tonight with uh, our credits. Take a look at these folks because I guarantee you I could not do the show without them. Thank you for tuning in. And Football Friday will be coming your way every Friday night during the high school football season at 1030. Have a good night, everybody.